Well, I showed you how to make the collars, and uh, we'll go over that a little bit right quick, and then we'll come here, and this is where the, uh, this is the collar we had made, and we had to add, six foot long, we had to add two foot to it, because it will come from up in this hill, crossed all the way here, into this bank right here, and that's just that eight foot long, so... That actually would have taken three of the homemade or three of the store bought collars that they're $130 a piece. So that's 390 bucks that we made out of a 15 gallon drum, $15 drum. And uh, I've dug down here. We have one seep right here. We have one seep, the real good one, running right here. I don't know if you can see it that good on the video. And then we have another one coming out of this pocket right over here. So between the three of them on this one spring head, that's what we're going to try to capture. Then we're going to go to the other one and see what we can capture. And hopefully we'll get enough to help supplement it. This is just a, we've got one now that flows about six, eight gallons a minute. And I just figured it's time to be compulsive. And while we can, we'll capture this one and have it if we ever need it. But let me get this blue collar down here and, uh, you can see where I've kind of scratched it here with the pick. Try to get a trough down in here. I'm going to scratch it out again. Set the collar in there and start tapping it down with a hammer. And see what we can get. And I'll bring you back to it. Well, here it is. I set it down in that, that little trench I scratched with the end of the pick. And beat it down in there as hard as I could with a hammer. And then started packing mud in there. You can see right here this light gray stuff. That's been light clay. Of course, the water back in the back end is kind of dirty looking. But you can see it blowing out the pipe already. It's that deep. We're going to stick another pipe on there and make it a little bit further away so it don't erode the wall. But what we're going to do right now is build this front wall up because that's where the pressure is going to be. And then, of course, we're going to put rock all in that back end so all the spring heads get to flow in there pretty even we're going to do that we'll bring you back up to it and show you what it's like when we get a little bit more done well before i go much further what i'm going to do is that this is the bottom pipe with the holes in it we're going to screw that in the bottom fitting we're going to dig a little trench out to make sure we, when we put rocks in that thing that it's got a pretty clear thing. It's not going to be down around the dirt. We're going to make sure we get gravel and rocks all the way around it. So I'm going to go ahead and screw the bottom and the top one in. And I'll show you what they look like. Well, here it is. If I can get my finger out of the picture. Here's what the two of them look like. I'm bending it forward. The holes go sideways. And like I said, the bottom one right there is flowing right now. The top one's strictly an overflow. This is what it looks like. We get that thing rocked up. I'll show you. I don't like the bleaching rig right there. I like to put it back in here. And I'll show you that on the next time. Before I get done. How I like to put the bleach bar in there. If you want to sanitize the spring head. And let me bring it up. Show you what it looks like. Before I get too far into this thing. Let me explain something. This pipe right here. That's your outlet pipe that's flowing. You want to get it down as low or a little bit lower than where the spring water is coming out of the ground. What you don't want to do is make it have to dam up any more than you have to. Because what will happen, all this water is flowing out from underneath this dirt, on, under on the rock, everything else. If you dam it up, water will take the path of least resistance. And all of a sudden it'll start coming out somewhere else because you dammed it up and it finds an easier path with no pressure on it. And that's where it's going to go. Because this thing's going to build a little bit of pressure. Not measurable, but this pipe here is going to run down. So once it's full of water, it's actually got to push. Gravity is going to do part of it, but part of it will just be the fact that there's more water above it. We'll put an air vent on this thing. But just try to remember... Don't think you're going to dam six, eight inches of water up. You want to get the inlet pipes as close to the natural spring level as you want. And that's why I said we dug out underneath the inlet pipe to make sure we get rock underneath of it so dirt and everything doesn't get in there. 
I want to make that point before we go too much further. Well, I'm here the next morning. Carried a half a dozen buckets of rocks in, got a little ways to go. But we're down here doing a simple measurement on the water flow and got this one pint bottle and we put it under here and it basically takes 10 seconds to fill up. So that's three quarters of a quart and or three quarters of a gallon in a minute. So at 1440 gallons, that is one gallon a minute times 60 minutes in an hour times 24 hours a day. So 1440 times 0.75 gives us 1,080 gallons of water a day coming out of just that little bit of a flow. So that's going to be more than enough out of this spring. And the other spring flowing a little bit heavier than this. So we might get two gallons. That's still 2,800 gallons. By the end of this, I'm going to tell you exactly why I'm capturing some more and whatnot. But let me stand up here and I'll show you what we've got done so far. Well, here we are. Here's what we've done. I've replaced that simple drain pipe. Came out of the dam. Put a three-quarter T and put this piece of pipe up. This cap just loosely fits over it. Got it cut on a notch right there. And this is just the air vent. So water doesn't get, you don't get water lock if there's a little bit of a bend going down the hill. This is just like a vent like you would have on a commode in a house or a sink drain to make it drain better. But as you can tell, we we got rocks piled in here. We want a gradual slope coming down to the top of the dam. We got from here over yet to do. And before we put the cover on, I'll show you my bleach bar that we put in that thing. And we'll be bleaching it before we cover it up. And then we're going to take all this natural material, cover it up with dirt, cover it over with pine straw. This one's a little bit harder. It'd be easy to go to the big box store and buy 10, 15, 20 bags of gravel, go home, wash them, and dump them in there. That'd be a whole lot easier. But as you can tell from where we are, we're on the side of the mountain. This place hasn't been logged or anything since I guess they did it with ox. And uh, so we don't have to worry about contamination, but it also gives access pretty bad. So that's why we're trying to wash these rocks off and get them up in here in the spring head. Um, doing everything we can, nothing that bleach ain't gonna take care of. And we'll probably use a product that I like to use called Oxidate. I'll show you a label of that thing. It's a restricted use, but it's uh, basically a high strength um, hydrogen peroxide and there's water treatment uh, listings for it. So anything that then would hit the stream is just hydrogen water and it dissipates in a matter of seconds, so it's gone. Bleach is a little bit more concerning in the stream. So we will be using Oxidate to sanitize everything. So let me get back to carrying buckets of rocks up here and uh, get this thing covered up and we'll show you some more of it. Well, here we are. I brought that T-bar down, and like I said, this is just a this is a piece of three-quarter inch pipe with holes drilled this time in the bottom. Right there will be the filler cap. We get all the rocks put in here, get the cover on top. We'll cut that little pole down wherever it needs to be, paint it black, paint this cap out here black. Of course, all this will be covered up with dirt up to here, and my 30 mil cover We'll lay from there all the way over the edge, cover everything up. We'll shovel it full of dirt when we get the cover on top of it and cover it back with pine straw. And the only thing you'll see is this little piece of pipe sticking out that'll be painted black. And this cap, and at some point going down this creek, will be the black one inch line coming out. And that'll be it. Let me show you what this cover is going to look like, and then we're going to sign off for a while. Well, here it is. This is 30 mil EBDHM roofing on it. The other thing you can use is they make a real good fabric for underneath putting uh, ceramic tile showers in. You can get it to big box stores. It's real heavy. You can make a box that's waterproof. Comes in like five foot wide sheets and as long as you want to buy it, it's in a roll. Uh, I got this, so this works. So we're gonna go ahead and start now putting some dirt over top of it cover it all up 
and we start the next spring we'll come back over here and film this thing for you let you know what the final end product looks like but if i can be of any help to you that's what carolina homestead planner does be more than glad to come out and help you with this thing or if you got any questions feel free the email's right there give me an email and i might ask you to send some pictures but thank you for watching tell your friends about it and this is part of my ongoing series of homesteading and prepping for the other 99 percent thank you